All right. This is the show that Arizona waits every night for. Social distancing at the chamber, also known as happy hour with Glenn and Garrick, happy hour with Hammer. Uh, first of all, before we jump into the news of the day, uh, how are you feeling physically? Thanks for asking. Feeling good, sleeping, eating well, exercising. My two oldest girls who are back from California have uh, taken really good care of their old man. Uh, it's good. How about, how about you? How are uh, you? Uh, you know, I think like everybody, it helps if I get out and walk around the block a little bit because otherwise I'm going to go into these fits of Corona panic. So you got to get out a little bit. We're in Arizona. The sun's out. It's Arizona Chamber of Commerce weather, getting a lot of vitamin D, six right. feet apart at least from other human beings. And, you know, it's working. All right, Glenn, as we tape this, uh, we are getting ready to hit send on a column that uh, you just drafted that looks at sort of the goings on in the world. But the lead topic in the column is what the Senate, knock wood, is getting ready to do. No, folks, you're not watching a repeat. In last night's edition, <laughs> we said that, uh, hold on a second, where am I? There I am. I'm back. Am I back, Glenn? Uh, you're back. You're back, Garrett. All right. In last night's edition, we said that the Senate was getting ready to pass a bill. Now it's Wednesday night. The Senate's getting ready to pass a bill, but we're closer this time, and it looks like it's going to happen. Is that right? If there is a possibility, it'll be Thursday night, and we'll be saying the Senate's getting ready to pass a bill. Uh, there is a little bit of a ground day aspect to this whole exercise. Uh, there's a good chance the Senate will figure this out. They're on the half-yard line. There's a couple of technical issues and what they put together. Let's hope that they can get this over the goal line uh, tonight. All right. So let's talk about it. Uh, we're in the $350 billion range. I know there's been different numbers out there, yeah. but this includes supports for businesses with mortgages, rents, payrolls, utility payments, uh, sick leave. Um, the stuff that keeps the business rolling. You're, you're very encouraged by this. So this is a $2 trillion package designed to rescue American business and fortify our hospital system. This is the equivalent of Congress declaring World War III on the coronavirus. The five, uh, excuse me, uh, the $350 billion provision that you mentioned is the lifeline to small businesses in Arizona and across the country. Because what it is, Garrick, it's really a two month or so uh, forgivable loan, almost a grant for those mm -hmm. small businesses, 500 people or less that keep people on payroll, they keep paying their rent, they keep paying their utilities, they keep paying their insurance payments. And as some of these companies need to be in hibernation, it really allows the dollars to flow. This is the single most important provision in the legislation for small businesses. That is huge. Uh, a fairly broad interpretation. It's up to 500 employees. But if you're in one of these big time industries that's just been tattooed, there's good news in this bill for you as well. So my understanding is if in, you're in the hospitality or restaurant industry, and let's say you're part of a chain of larger companies, you could disaggregate. So one unit can take advantage of this provision. That's particularly important for a state like Arizona, where we're a heavy tourism and restaurant economy. We have 300,000 right. jobs tied to tourism. We have 250,000 jobs tied to the restaurants. That's over a half million workers. Uh, so that provision uh, is so, so important. And the other thing, Garrick, here is this is not a bureaucratic morass. This isn't normal government type programs that could be very difficult. Uh, it's 100% guaranteed by the feds. Basically, all that it takes to uh, enter this program is an attestation that you were hurt yeah. uh, by the coronavirus. And then it allows the banks, the community banks, uh, local lenders uh, to do the rest. So this program is, is, is really the one that will save small business in America. It's huge. Uh, something you mentioned in your 
column, not to get ahead of ourselves, but assuming that the Senate wraps this up, it's time for the House to uh, move with great, great haste, right? They need to get moving. So speed matters here, because as we're having this conversation, literally every minute, a business in America is closing or reducing uh, its its headcount. So time matters here. The faster this goes through, the faster we could get to the implementation stage and give these small businesses a lifeline. So every day that's delayed, there's literally thousands of businesses across America that will shut their doors, and many are never going to come back. Well, let's hope we get this done. Uh, as you indicate in your uh, comments, uh, you had great praise for Senator Sinema and Senator McSally. And you mentioned that in your conversations with the delegation, you have every confidence that they're going to get this deal done. Garrick, I'm, I'm so proud of our entire delegation. Re the Republicans and Democrats have really come together to, to work this problem. And we've had conference calls with most of the members of the yeah. delegation. But yes, I do want to give uh, specific praise to Senators Sinema and McSally and their offices. Uh, they have been uh, extremely accessible. They've been listening yeah. to all of the different issues that the chamber and our members have raised. And as a result, I'm confident we're, we, we will have a better product than we would have otherwise had without that communication. Well, uh, looking forward to reading that and getting a deal done. <laughs> all right. I want to take you in a completely different direction. A New York Times story looking at the impact of coronavirus in countries like uh, Mexico and Brazil. At the early stages of this crisis, the numbers coming out of Latin America and the Caribbean were pretty low. It's probably a result of uh, few tests comparatively having been conducted. Uh, you're our resident Mexico watcher. Are you concerned? I'm, I'm, I'm very concerned because, you know, the United States, we have a very, very strong, robust uh, health care system. And we have very strong uh, state, state governors and governments and a very strong federal bureaucracy. Uh, Mexico has, has a very strong uh, technocratic class. Mm -hmm. but, but in terms of the, uh, the ability to withstand a pandemic of this size, I am, I am very concerned. And I'm also concerned that the national government, uh, and I'm meaning the, the, the leader, yeah. hasn't necessarily uh, spoken with the uh, seriousness uh, that this issue requires. Now, I'll say again, the, the national bureaucracy, the, the uh, National Health Care Administration in Mexico, I've, I've read uh, translations. They've been on top of this, and they're doing a very good job of getting information through. But this is one where you need the top of governmental officials, the bureaucracy, and business leaders all singing off the same song sheet about how important it is to take this pandemic seriously. Yeah, there's, you know, there are some outstanding healthcare providers and hospital systems in Mexico. They are they're top notch, and as you said, yeah. there is a public health structure in Mexico that has proven successful. Even the article talks about the fact that that country pretty much nipped H1N1 in the bud. But I think your point is important here that the guy at the top, AMLO, needs to start modeling good behavior too. Yeah, no, your, your point is exactly right. I mean, Mexico, when you go back 10 or so years ago with H1N1, they did, they did an excellent job. And, and they are now, you know, the, the National Health uh, society has put out a whole bunch of material. Some of them are really good. And some of them are sort of cartoons that are extremely easy to understand. They're helpful for me to understand. I could understand them even though, you know, my I have duolingo Spanish. I have a great tutor, but I, you know, my my Spanish, I'm certainly not fluent. So but but what I'm hoping, Garrick, is that Mexico can get through this uh, as strong as possible. And then the United States and Mexico and Canada we can learn from this experience and we could really do some incredible things to uh, reorient supply chains and make North America, which is already the most prosperous free trade block in the world, much stronger than it even is today. Well, let's end on that point because 
Uh, as a good friend of ours at the U.S. Chamber has said, there's never a bad time for good policy. There's some movement on the Hill to advance some tariff relief. If you ever need to keep supply chains moving and bring tariffs down, now's the time. Where's your confidence level that we could do something like that in the next few weeks? It's not high that we would do something broadly, but my understanding is that we have reduced some of the tariffs in terms of things that are related to the coronavirus, some of the medical uh, equipment and, and the supplies. Uh, there's actually a lot of supplies coming out of China right now that are helpful uh, for countries like the United States that need mm -hmm. this personal protection equipment. Right. And there's a lot of stories of uh, Chinese ventilators going into Italy, which desperately needs them. Mm -hmm. Here, here's the thing. Tariff relief is always good. Tariffs are a tax on consumers, so it reduce some of the strain on just what we feel in purchasing every day. But Garrick, even more importantly right now, where we need this medical equipment and supplies, we should, we should make it as cheap and easy and frictionless to get it from any country in the world that can supply our needs. Well said. <laughs> we will end it there. Let's hope that uh, tomorrow night we're talking about uh, the House moving on this bill and that the Senate has completed its work. Let's, let's hope. Let's hope. All right. Tune in tomorrow. We're going to have a special guest from the tourism industry joining Glenn and me to talk about what's going on in that industry. And hopefully we can have a little, uh, a few rays of hope come through. Glenn, we will catch up with you tomorrow night. Good night. Thank you, Garrick.